Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This is part four to the church series. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how I finished up the church with all of the painting techniques that I used. I'm talking everything from roof down to the very base of the church. So as always, thank you so much for joining me here. Hello to the new subscribers. Any questions, ask below, and I will do my best to answer them for you and have fun with it. Because of all the paints involved in this project, I'm just taking pictures of the paints that I used. It's a lot easier that way. The first thing I started out with was doing the roof. And because it was a slate roof that I was using as a model, really what you want to do is have this variety of colors and you're going to alternate where you're putting your colors. I started with the dark blue, worked my way up to the light gray. Whatever color combination you want to do is fine. Rule of thumb here is just to make sure it has variety to it. Once you have all those different color paints on and you have it to the intensity you want, let everything dry. Then what you're going to do is take a wash, a very thin wash made out of that pewter gray, and go over the roof. When that wash is dry, you're going to take just simple gray and you're going to be doing a dry brushing across the shingles to bring out the texture. And that's a little closer up look so you can see the texture and the different colors all blending together with the different techniques. Next up, I did the sides of the church. Again, here are the paints I used. And you're gonna be sponging with this. Personally, I used my cosmetic sponge because I really like the way that looks. If you haven't seen it yet, check out that video. It'll be in the description. So once you have everything ready to go, I first paint on a layer of the dark gray. Now you do not need to get this into every nook and cranny. Just kind of keep the paintbrush gliding above and on the surface. Here are just some different angles so you can see the different sides painted in that dark gray. Then what I did was take the other colors and go back around with my sponge. I didn't wait for dry time in this part. I let the colors blend together. So I did the other remaining colors with my cosmetic sponge, went around, got every nook and cranny I could, and here's my end result. Once everything's dry, you are going to want to do a dark wash, not a black wash. Dark wash is an even mix of dark brown and black thinned out with water. I made this extremely thin because I wanted to get into those different layers of brick and stonework. So go around the entire piece and put on that dark wash and let it dry completely. I did overnight to be safe. And once you know it is completely dry, the next thing you're going to do is take either the cosmetic sponge, which I did, or you can take a dry brush and go through with the color suede and do a highlight or a dry brush over some of those surface areas. Then we're going to move on to doing the steeple. And these are the colors I use for the steeple. And this is the top part of it, not where the brickwork is. So the first color you're going to start with is bronze. Now it took me a couple layers and again, make sure it dries between these two layers. Otherwise it tends to pull up on itself. So there's coat one, and then coat two, you see the intensity's gotten a little bit better. You don't want it purely bronze, you do want a little bit of the original coat of blood dark to show up because it helps add some depth to the metal. Then what I did was mix the green and the blue together to create a patina color. And what I did is first sponged around, let that dry totally, and then I took a brush and I took the edge of the brush and just pulled top to bottom to create that weathering look that any natural bit of copper would get when it's outside. And just to add to the weather it look a little bit more, I did some more suede, again with a dry brush technique. Uh, top to bottom, I did pull across where there's that little detailed pattern at the base. Now for the windows. To give the window some depth, I went through and I took this silver and I painted into each window pane that silver color. And this is going to enhance the colors you put on to your windows. So definitely don't skip this step if you do plan on painting them. I did want to show you this picture because you decide you don't want to make these stained glass windows. The sponging technique actually gives it a pretty cool look. So you can see what the windows would look like if you had just left them alone. I leave that up to you. It's your project in the long run. But here it is completely filled in. And then you can see it looks a little bit different with a rose window because that started off gray, but we're gonna move on to doing the stained glass part. Again, your colors are completely up to you. This is what I decided to go with. Keep your colors bright or vivid. That's gonna be key because we're gonna do a little technique to make them look like the outside of a stained glass window, not what they look like inside with the sun shining through. So start with brighter colors. 
fill in carefully. I had to use a smaller brush for this. Uh, it's going to depend on what you're doing and the style windows you're doing. Smaller is better in this case. Figure out your color patterns. Once you get it going, you can start filling in with your other colors. And you're going to find that as you build up with this, you get a pretty cool look starting up. So again, plot out how you want this to go. For the back window, I decided to freehand in some flowers just to give it some more interest. I didn't want it to be any type of uh, denomination or certain belief system, so flowers were pretty safe and mundane in this case, but it gave it a point of interest in the back. Decide what it is you want to do and go from there. And here are just the side panes, which I gave more of like a harlequin pattern, alternating the different colors of squares, which in the long run worked out pretty nicely too. But again, this is up to you. Let everything dry before moving on to the next step. What you're going to need to do is get this special paint that will pearlize paint. You will need to be 18 years old to purchase this, believe it or not. You're going to take this pearlized paint and put it onto all of the windows. Now once that's dry, what I did is I took a black gel pen and I just outlined those flowers, broke up the pattern of the window a little bit, again to make it look like the exterior of a stained glass window. And here's a closer shot so you can see the detail work on that. Now we're going to move on to finishing up the roof. Everything at this point is dry, so I went back and I took that suede again to add more weathering to the slate look. And what I did is I took that suede and I took my brush and I pulled it on a very narrow edge, top to bottom, and I just made those streaks, pulling it down, pulling it down, as would happen when rain or any type of weathering happens on slate roofs. Now with the doors, it's actually pretty simple. It's just these two different colors of brown, and you're going to dry brush. Start with a darker, once that's sort of dry, because you do want it to blend a little bit, you're going to go back and you're going to pull the lighter brown across. At this point, I also painted the door pulls bronze, just using the bronze that I used from the steeple. It took one coat. I didn't make it a very thick coat. I wanted that dark coloring to come through as well. But those are the doors finished with the painting. To ante up the doors a little bit, I took a strip of gold ribbon and I put it across the base of the doors just to kind of give them a nice little kick plate effect. And you want to make sure you use hot glue for attaching that, but make sure the glue is hot. But there's the finished result for the doors. And finally, I decided to give this a floor because when you open the doors, it's basically this empty room. I have made up a tutorial on how to do this diamond floor. I'm going to put that link at the end of this video. But I found that this was actually a better way to go with things because trying to fit anything inside the birdhouse is tight, no pun intended. So I used this uh, scrap that I had from the tutorial and I found that the diamond pattern made it easy for me to cut it up into sections so that I could place it in piece by piece with Elmer's white glue and stick it down but then I could take out another piece and put it through the narrow area and again get it on the floor and it just notches in together like a puzzle so you wouldn't see any cut lines and it worked out beautifully that way. So there's an inside shot. The one thing you want to make sure you do is the front part of your floor, bevel it because you're going to want to hot glue that white edge that you can see right now down to give it more of a seamless look from threshold into church which is right there an example for you to show you what I mean. So the hot glue I just took it and I pressed my thumbs down on top to make sure it adhered but then it was a more smooth transition going from the open doors into the church itself. And that's completely optional. So that's the whole project in and of itself. Thank you so much for following along. I have a couple more pictures for you after my final thoughts. I hope you enjoyed everything you've seen throughout this four part episode series grouping for the church birdhouse. And I thought it'd be appropriate being such a long series. It took me a couple weeks to get this done just to kind of have some final thoughts on uh, the project itself. Just take your time with it. Don't rush it. Don't feel like you have to get this done in a certain amount of time. Granted, if it's for, you know, you have a game in a couple days, that I get, but just make sure everything dries, especially when it comes to the super glue and the paint parts, because that's where uh, I can say this firsthand, those little um, issues might crop up if you're just so excited or too eager or too rushed to get a certain part of it done if you have something that needs to truly cure and to truly dry, uh, take your time. Check out Google for images. I looked at so many different pictures of 
rose windows, of cathedral windows, of stonework, of slate roofs and everything like that, where it kind of helped me find my own means of how I wanted the end result to look. Definitely take advantage of Google or really any other online internet visual search that you want to do. I just tend to go Google because that's what I use. Any type of materials that you kind of have as findings, those you may find work out really well as accent pieces. That strip of gold ribbon at the bottom of the door was actually cut off from the tassels for the fountains, uh, believe it or not. Definitely, if you haven't checked it out yet, go look at Dungeons and Glue Sticks. He does some um, phenomenal work. John, hello, love your stuff as always. But yeah, if you haven't discovered his channel yet, please go over there and check it out. I mean, the detail he puts into his buildings are phenomenal. He's got a lot of live streams um, where he's answering questions. So it's definitely worth taking the time and watching a few, if not most, if not all, of the videos he has up there right now. Hope you enjoyed this process. I certainly did. I am super excited for other points of inspiration this has now given me for making a townscape, which we really don't have that much of, come to think of it. And uh, I'm eager to see where it goes. So. Thank you again. I always enjoy sharing these with you. I always enjoy hearing what people have to say afterwards if they've decided to take on projects that I've shared with you. So if you've done the same thing, please reach out to me. I now have an email for this channel. It's in the uh, about section of this channel, so you can come reach me. If you would rather just skip that part, it is thecraftingnewsaltogether.email at gmail.com. That's it for today. Have fun as always. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. For the texture of the windows, cool. See those flowers? Mm -hmm. Those are really neat draws. And the colors on the top have lots of extreme lots of texture. Yeah, it's extreme lots of texture? Yeah. What about the Whoa. Sun? What do you think? There's green, purple, red, blue, mm -hmm. another red, blue, and another purple. Yeah. What do you think of the roof? And red. Red, yeah. Whoa, this is kind of like red, dark green, mm -hmm. bluish. Yeah. There's cracks. Yeah. I like that in the bricks. Yep. Nope. And the doors, kid. The doors I still have to finish. That's my one of my last things. Yeah, and they could open. That's really cool. You like that they open? Mommy has to figure out what to do inside. I'll get there. Oh, got to close one first, then the other. Okay. There you go. Yep. This one? This is the way it's made. Yep. Ta-da. How can the... This is a bird's house, right? Yes, it was a bird house. So how can the birds open the door? They have to knock. Knock? Mm-hmm. And then it'll open? Yeah. It's probably for owls, because you know what will happen? They'll knock, knock. And the owl will say... Who's there? <laughs> what? So how can they actually get in? Oh, it's just for show. It's not so much for actual the birds opening and closing their doors. Is this recording? Mm-hmm. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, remember? Oh, right. It's crazy. It's crazy, I tell you. Okay, there's some flowers. Wow, here. these stained windows look really cool. You like that? Yeah. Good, I'm glad. See, that is a bell? steeple. Oh, wait a minute, is that one of my pencil thingies? Yeah, it's a pencil eraser. Cool. I still have plenty of those left. Yes, you, you have like a bag of 24. I think one missing will be okay. Yeah, I have plenty. You have plenty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>